Um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, today, we are going to talk about Fedora in Google Summer of Code and Outreachy. So we have a short introduction for these programs, if you don't know what they are. And then we will talk about the application process and timeline for these programs and like some guidelines you need to keep in mind when you are proposing projects for this program or when you are applying as students. We will also have the Fedora admins for these programs, Laura and Bex, come up and talk a little bit about Fedora's involvement in these programs and some tips probably for proposing the projects. And we will also have the students showcasing their uh, demos uh, about the projects, what they did over the summer, and also uh, mentors talking about their experience in this program. So yeah, uh, if you don't know me, I am uh, B. Uh, I am also involved in the community operations team and the diversity and inclusion team. I was also a Google Summer of Code mentor this year for the Fedora Happiness Packets project, along with Yona. Uh, who is my co-presenter, and she will uh, do some parts of this presentation. So let's begin. So uh, can uh, everyone here just like show their hands if they have already heard of Google Summer of Code? OK. <laughs> so I guess most of you know about what Google Summer of Code is. So it, we'll, we can skim over this part. So it's like a remote paid internship program with FOSS organizations, and Fedora has been involved with Google Summer of Code since a long time. Uh, it's open to all students who are 18 plus, and you can propose like programming projects through this program. Uh, it happens once every year during the summer, and the internships are from May to August. But uh, the project proposal deadline is a bit early, around I guess early Feb. And can you now like can you now do a show of hands for Outreachy? How many people have heard about Outreachy? Okay, so about almost the same. Okay, cool. So Outreachy is a similar program to Google Summer of Code, but it is basically it also has another goal in mind to improve diversity in open source communities. So it is uh, open internationally to women, trans men, genderqueer folks, and uh, US residents and nationals who are from underrepresented communities. And the difference, the main difference here is that uh, Outreachy also has non-technical projects. So if you have like a design project or, um, or like a graphics, project or like documentation project or something else, you can propose it through Outreachy. Outreachy has two rounds every year. Uh, the internships are from May to August and also from December to March. So we will talk a little bit about uh, Fedora and uh, Fedora's participation in Google Summer of Code and Outreachy. So Fedora has participated in uh, Google Summer of Code since its first round in 2005. So it has been more than 13 years now. And we have had uh, around 80 projects till date. So yeah, so, some <laughs> so you will see uh, some of the projects we are developing over the summer. Uh, after some time. So as you probably already know, all projects are programming projects. And over this summer, the students have worked on uh, projects uh, ranging for like um, analysts for containers for like Kono and Open, and also Fedora Happiness Packets project. And also they have developed like the front end and back end for Fedora Community App. Uh, now I'll talk a little bit about Fedora's involvement in Outreachy. So Fedora has been involved in Outreachy since its early rounds in 2013. I guess we have had more than five um, students through Outreachy. And uh, we'll have Marie, who will talk about uh, her design, badges design project, um, which was a part of Outreachy in 2015, I guess. 2013, okay. 
and we have also had a few other like design interns throughout Ricci uh, for Fedora. So I hope like you'll get to see some projects which have been showcased and talk to the mentors. So why does Fedora participate in Outreachy and Google Summer of Code? So I mean, obviously, it helps us identify and bring in newcomers, talented people with a diverse skill set into Fedora community. And it also helps us support and improve diversity in Fedora and broad, like in other, in the whole open source project communities. So yeah, so uh, I guess. Uh, when our program coordinators, Laura and Brian, they come up and talk about this, they will also mention a few points about Fedora's involvement in these programs and also have some tips for mentors who are going to submit, pro who want to submit project proposals to be a part of these programs. So we will have that w in a few minutes. Uh, and before that, I just want to introduce the timeline and everything. OK, so uh, why should you be involved in this project? So there are two ways for you to be involved in uh, Google Summer of Code and Outreachy. If you are a student or if you are looking for a paid internship in uh, open source community, and especially Fedora, so uh, you can get paid to develop your skills and contribute to projects in Fedora. Uh, if you apply as an intern through Outreachy or Google Summer of Code to one of the projects we have proposed, or it is also possible for you to uh, propose your own project and if you have like a mentor in mind who can mentor you through the entire uh, internship duration. Uh, and for mentors, which is basically what we are looking forward to uh, from this uh, session. So. Uh, if you want to pro uh, propose a project proposal, you like through this program, you get to build and grow your team, and also like get people with a diverse skill set into your team, and like while getting like building your projects. So it's a great way to onboard newcomers and like have them contributing to your projects. So yeah, we are looking for project proposals for the upcoming Outreachy round. Uh, the open call for proposals is on community blog. And you can go through it and um, say, probably send in your project proposal. So uh, it's on a wiki page. So you have all the details in there about how to submit a proposal. And we are looking forward to it. The projects can be technical or non-technical. So uh, we don't really have a requirement, but uh, we have a few tips before you submit a pro the project proposals, like, <coughs> like defining the scope of the project, which I will get to before. But just before that, I want to talk about the timeline for both Outreachy and GSOC for proposing projects and for the internships. So I hope you can see this. The font is a bit small. So <coughs> Google Summer of Code uh, or like internships are from May to August this every year. So we just finished the round for this year. And but you can ob always submit proposals for next year. The proposals uh, will open in Jan. So you can submit your proposals then. Like we will know whether the our, whether Fedora has been accepted as a mentoring organization uh, in Feb 12, and after that you can submit the project on our web page. The internships, uh, the application period for internships will begin uh, in March, and it will go around till end of March, and the internships will begin in May, and they will go on till August. For Outreachy, the like I said, now the call for proposals for the December round is open. The internships for this round are from December to March. Uh, the application period starts in September. And the deadline for applications is in late October. Um, outreachy, inter like 
outreach applicants are expected to do like a small initial contribution during their application period so uh, like you should definitely expect people to like applicants to already start like contributing uh, towards beginner tasks during this period so uh, so here are a few things and tips basically for uh, future mentors who want to submit a project proposal so if you want to submit an idea, uh, every project needs at least one or like possibly, hopefully, two responsible mentors to teach and help the intern. Uh, it's at least a five hours per week commitment. And it begins, um, it starts from beginning of the application period. So for the outreach round, it will start around mid-September and it will go on till the end of the internship, so which is around mid-March, but uh, you can expect like the evaluations and everything, so till March. <coughs> and personally, from, ex like, from experience, I would say like even though f uh, it says five hours, I guess five hours is the least uh, amount you should do. Uh, you should at least like expect to talk to your mentee uh, every week and go through their code reviews. So while it's not that intense, it's like it's still uh, like helping a newcomer to your project start. So it takes some time out of your day, like out of every week. And yeah, so like I said before, outreachy applicants are expected to make a first contribution to the project they are applying for. So uh, when you submit a project proposal, you also need to have some like beginner task for applicants uh, like properly defined so that they can work on it. And this is also helpful for Google Summer of Code. Like even though they don't uh, have like uh, uh, they don't have a requirement like this, it is always helpful to have some small like beginner tasks or. Uh, newcomers who want, who want to apply for the project to start on. And yeah, so we are looking forward to applications <coughs> for interns and project proposals from Fedora community. And now I want to invite Brian and Laura here to talk a little bit about Google Summer of Code and Outreachy. Um, hi, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Laura Abbott, and I get excited about kernels a lot. And uh, this is part of the reason why I love doing outreachy and being an organizer, because I get to get other people excited about what they love in open source. Um, I don't think we had anything really formal planned, but uh, Bex, you want to introduce yourself? I'm Brian Exelbeard. I'm the Fedora Community Action and Impact Coordinator, and I help with the Google Summer of Code program and support Laura where I can. And I get really excited about watching kernels boot on my laptop. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, thanks. It was a great introduction to Outreach and Google Summer of Code. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, mentors and mentors for Outreachy. And mentors are what really um, make the Outreachy experience, I think, both having an, ex an enthusiastic mentor and also a well defined project. Um, and I know for a lot of people, this may be the first time they try doing something like this. And I would say, if you have any questions at all, um, please come talk to me. And uh, especially before things start, uh, if you know, I'm happy to help uh, talk about experiences, mentoring, setting up a plan, reviewing things, because we ultimately want to make sure this is a great experience, not just for the student, but for the mentor. And this is also something I will give a tip for anyone who ever decides they want to mentor, is make sure you're communicating both with um, your student uh, and you know uh, the administrators frequently. Again, we want to make sure pro problems are solved. And that is the biggest thing I you know, always think is takeaway, is just, you know, communication solves a lot of things. Uh, anything you want to talk about? Um, what I would add is, uh, to kind of echo some of what Laura said, uh, 
The mentors are the only reason the programs are successful, quite frankly. Um, as administrators, there's very little that we can do that is going to change the outcome of an individual student because of all of the other work that we're trying to accomplish. It really comes down to the mentors doing that. And the students are going to bring all of the energy and all of the, the work and, and the um, success, but they need the mentor's help. Uh, it works a little bit differently with Google, uh, with the Google Summer Code program. We, uh, we try to get the entire community involved, which is certainly done with an outreachy, but it's a much more compressed time scale. And so we're really looking to have multiple mentors on projects. We try to have very strong project proposals. Um, and we try to do a public review of projects these days. So we really encourage you, even if you don't have time to be a mentor, show up in the, the public review give your comments, talk about where you could help or where these code projects might fit better into other parts of the project, because it really is a community effort. It's Fedora's participation, not one person's participation. Yeah, and another thing I'll say is, is that um, if for some reason you decide you don't want to be a mentor, I think that's okay. I love it when people mentor, but I also appreciate that it is a time sink. So don't force yourself to mentor if you have other things going on and you don't think you'll have the time. This is not to say, you know, you can't work with us to say make it work, but you know, it is a commitment and it needs to be taken seriously. But what I will also say is, is that just because you can't do it this round, um, there's always next round. If you have an idea, I'd say, especially now that we've um, done the work to get into Pagir, it's pretty easy to put a ticket and we can tag it and say, hey, this might be a good idea for next round and we can always revisit it. So again, there's always opportunities for mentorship. Yeah, I just echo, it is never too early to put a ticket in with an idea for a project. Never too early. Absolutely. There's a lot of things that we want to get done in our project that are fantastic for both of these programs. So let's go ahead and get those ideas out there so that we can keep refining them for the students. Um, the other thing I would say uh, is that uh, the Outreach program and the Google Summer of Code programs work very differently from an administrative perspective. On the Google Summer of Code side, the mentors really also help drive a lot of that communication because they're in such constant contact in that compressed period. Um, there are multiple uh, evaluation periods within the Google Summer of Code program and components like this. So even if you don't want to be a mentor, we're always looking for some level of assistance on the administrative side. It's not a full-time commit by any stretch, but there are some needs that we have, whether it's just assisting us with, you know, cleaning up websites for the next year, um, figuring out where the problems were from workflow or application flow, things like this, down to, I sometimes get terrible while I'm planning a conference about sending emails about Google Summer of Code, maybe, um, and somebody can kick me in the backside and make sure that happens. Yeah, and I would also like to give a um, big shout out to Mo Duffy, who also did um, outreach organization for, for years, so she definitely did there, and, you know, yeah. And I think that's about all I wanted to say. So um, I would just as well give a shout out to my co-administrator Martin. I'm going to mispronounce his last name. Bija. Bija. Thank you. As all of the Czechs have said it correctly in the audience, I'll go with Bija. Sorry, that's the best I can do, Martin. If you're watching the uh, the recording, I tried to put all those hot checks there, um, but uh, he's been fantastic to work with and has served as both a great person to send things and kick me in the backside when things needed to get done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now we will have a discussion and uh, I will invite the mentors and later the mentees, the students. But before I wanted to say that, um, so Brian, um, Laura and mentors and the students, please don't go after we finish because we want to do a group photo with all of you. Uh, so I want to invite the mentors uh, to come. So uh, we'll be a discussion with them. They will give some tips. Uh, share their experience with us, and if you will have questions, um, you are more than welcome to do it. So, first of all, I would like if you can present yourself a bit. Don't hit the screen. Um, my name's Dusty. Uh, I'm involved in the Atomic Working Group, and uh, the project I'm helping mentor this time is the Google Summer of Code project for the Fedora IoT edition, uh, helping detect failed boots and automatically roll back. Um, so that's my involvement this year. Pass it on to Peter. Um, 
I'm Peter, I'm the Fedora IoT lead. I co-mentored with Dusty. Um, Dusty did most of the work from an admin point of view. Um, I proposed the idea as like a GSOC project for Fedora. Um, it's not IoT specific and it will be useful for the entire Atomic Core OS platforms moving forward and generally in Fedora. Um, I was really excited to get a GSOC student and Christian was absolutely fantastic um, so early in the Fedora IoT evolution. Um, for me it was a really positive experience um, and with the outreachy stuff I've suddenly had a thousand extra ideas so watch out. Um, I think we'll see Fedora IoT and ARM and related stuff there in the future because I've, it's been fab. Hi, my name is Shubantro and uh, I work for the Fedora QA team and this time for GSOC, I started mentoring for something called Fedora Community App. It's an app which lets the users and Fedora, like one who is enthusiastic about Linux, Fedora Linux to know mostly what's going on in the project. So mostly targeting towards users and then later make them transfer towards more contributor specific stuff. So yeah, I had interns. So the project was split between two parts, which is the front end and the back end. So we used to have a very basic app before, which was not doing much. And then this year GSOC, we had two awesome people who helped us uh, work with them and one one is Abhishek, who, uh, which, who was mentored by Kanika, one of my colleagues, and uh, he worked on the front end part of the app, while Amitosh worked on the back end part of the app, and we kind of revamped the entire UI, the entire structuring by implementing caching and the rest of what those guys will speak more. But yes, we, we kind of now have an app which can be given to any person, any student, any anyone who wants to know what's going on in the project, which part, and exactly maybe attend meetings, schedule meetings, and ask Fedora is integrated, so you can probably even see what are the, if you have an issue, you can look into and see if that works good. So that's all about me. Um, hi, everyone. So you probably know me already. Uh, I'm B. I was a mentor for Fedora Hep. <coughs> happiness packets project along with uh, Yona here. So the idea behind this project is that we will be having a Fedora Appreciation Week in November to like um, appreciate all the work the Fedora community has been doing for their contributions. Like in open source, you sometimes we always like we feel like we are not appreciated enough. So this week is dedicated to all the Fedora community members and to say thank you to them. So people will send like we expect contributors to share their experiences and send like um, like thank you messages to each other during this period. So we have built a website for that, which is basically a fork of the Happiness Packets website, but it has some Fedora specific features. So Anna has been working on the Fedora Happiness Packets project website and its development and design uh, over the summer for like through Google Summer of Code and yeah, so she will be doing a demo, like a present short presentation about the project details later on. And basically that's it. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, you explained what uh, our mentee did. So uh, I wanted to ask now uh, the mentors, like um, what tips you would give to the other mentors, but during the application period. So let's say uh, the qualities that they need to look for while they select the students or some tips when they, uh, let's say, need to create some beginner tests uh, so the students can do their first contributions, something that you want to highlight for them so the application period uh, can be, I don't know, um, what should they do uh, so it will be easier for people uh, to contribute to your idea? So I don't know how good my answer will be because Peter actually wrote the uh, project proposal for mine, but like obviously having a <coughs> fairly well thought out uh, project proposal helps a lot um, because that kickstarts the entire project into already having, you know, some sort of uh, you know, structure and goals involved. Um, 
I would say when you're trying to uh, select a student, um, it obviously helps a lot if the student already has some sort of open source contributions already. Obviously, you don't necessarily want to make that a requirement because we want to bring more people into the open source community, not just, you know, take people that are already there and subsume them into the community, but that definitely affects how much time you will spend with them over the course of the project. Um, so like, I guess that's a bit of a challenge is like, you don't just want to take people that you already know are good. You want to also, you know, bring more people into the community as well, but you also have to consider how much time you have to uh, mentor them on things like, um, you know, how do you communicate in an open source project? How do you properly have uh, patience to wait for people to reply? How do you appropriately, um, you know, periodically nudge them for an answer. Maybe they missed the notification before, stuff like that. Um, so, I don't know, that was a bit of a rambly answer, but maybe let somebody else take a stab at it too, or? Yeah. Yep. So, um, when it, this was the first time I've been involved in GSOC, and Brian uh, pinged me one morning and said, we need to get a whole bunch of ideas up on the website now and so I threw like three or four, I think it was, IoT related ideas and Raspberry Pi related ideas up as proposal ideas because even before I think the GSOC application like went into Google um, for the organisation, we needed to have ideas this year. Um, I then proceeded to get drowned in emails from people that wanted to work on those projects. Which is a good problem. Which is a good problem, but like I as an individual that's pretty busy as it is, um, found it daunting to deal with it to the point where the Raspberry Pi one I said to Brian just literally deleted off the website. Um, and I got emails particularly about that from people that had never used Fedora and that that one was Python bindings for GPIO. Um, they'd never used Fedora, they didn't have a Raspberry Pi, they'd never written Python and I'm just like, oh. I ex and so the writing of the ideas for projects to contribute to um, was a big learning experience for me. Like, I needed, and I mean, it was a bit of a throw it up there in a few minutes because we need to get this done today so that we will be accepted as an organisation. Um, so for next year, I'm going to spend a lot more time writing that experience required. Fedora, like, actually used Fedora before, actually written Python libraries before, that sort of stuff. Um, and as Dusty said, that preparation um, and like obviously one of the things with GSOC is you don't want a student that can do it necessarily um, because they need to grow as part of that process but at the same time I didn't have time to be teaching someone how to boot Fedora on a Raspberry Pi um, and so you need to I think setting expectations with those sort of ideas um, is uh, very important to begin with and it sets the project off for both you the mentor and the st potential students um, by setting those expectations properly I think so like the Raspberry Pi GPIO stuff and like even after we'd taken it off the site I was getting emails about a month later um, so it was whereas with the atomic host one I think we had three or four or like the applications were weeded down to three to four candidates, um, and they were all pretty strong candidates. Um, we had less buzzwords in that one. Well, and, <laughs> well, Raspberry Pi and GPIO and stuff like that probably like brought in people that weren't even Fedora users, um, and I think I had one or two that had never even used Linux, um, and so <laughs> that for me was a big learning experience, and. Um, you know, we've been, Christian was a fantastic student, I hope he's grown from the experience, um, but like we had weekly video conf calls, um, we had, you know, regular daily IRC chats, um, you know, Christian got to touch things from the low level, grub boot level, all the way up through the stack. I think that was probably pretty daunting for him. Um, we got Leonard on a video conf one day, so he got to 
chat away with Leonard Pottering from System D and stuff like that. So I think he had a pretty good experience, but but like the process to get there was fairly full on. And just to add to that, just a little bit, Peter mentioned um, that you know we got several people involved with mentoring in the project, and I think that's a big key. So like obviously Peter's a busy person, uh, I I'm a busy person as well. And what we essentially did was we spread around the load. I know she, uh, was it you or her that mentioned earlier about the five hours minimum of time that you would want to spend? Well, we essentially had like five different people help mentor in our project and that helped us uh, spread around the load a little bit. So when you create the proposal, if you could get buy-in from several people on a couple different teams, uh, you know, different levels of expertise and different pieces, it can really help. But you do need somebody who's kind of like, you know, overall responsible for the project moving forward, and like that helps. But you know, having other people pitch in, which is essentially what we do in the open source communities anyway, we're used to doing that, right? Um, is what really helped our project be successful. So, if you, when you create a proposal, if you reach out to somebody and say, "Hey, I'm creating this proposal. I'm going to run it to ground." But if we get to a point where I need some help, you know, teaching somebody how to boot Fedora on a Raspberry Pi, could you help? And if they say yes, that basically helps the project be more successful, I think. We talked a long time, sorry. That's mostly what it is. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to add a few words. They basically covered most of it, but. Uh, I just want to say that when you define your proposals, don't put in too many Fedora specific tools in it. Like, uh, we had, like, the, we put a separate section for uh, skills which the applicant should probably already have, like Python programming or like a little bit experience with uh, UI, UX development maybe because it was a website. So in there we also put like Peguer and everything. So don't like don't do that because uh, people like who apply they come from like a diverse background and they don't know about fedora specific tools they can obviously learn as they go but if you put it in the project proposal they find it intimidating that they need to know so many technologies so they might not reach out to you and also uh, like be expected to have a lot of messages over irc emails and like you will have them so you need to have some uh, time during the application period and uh, another thing is what we did for our project was we used twitter to promote our project proposal to get more applicants in for the project so i and i think anna read about <laughs> saw the project via twitter so if you want to do that, you can also do it because uh, the distribution of applicants over projects is pretty uneven. Some projects are very common like amongst applicants, but some others like get very few applicants. So you can use your social media to promote it. Okay. Okay, so uh, we mentioned even some tips uh, during the internship, uh, but I want to ask again, like some things that you want to highlight uh, now for mentors, especially uh, tips that they need to, uh, let's say, be careful during um, the internship, like some tips how to communicate with their mentee, uh, like how often, or uh, let's say some of the challenges you had if you were like in different time zones or something else, and. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you think that it's something that you want? So I would say um, definitely make it clear to the student that they don't have to wait for a scheduled meeting in order to reach out to you. If they're having a problem, reach out earlier than later because like sometimes you have a problem and you think you're gonna overcome this problem and you continue to have the problem, but I'm really close to overcoming the problem. And then you continue to have the problem and then it becomes a real problem, right? Because we've waited so long. Um, so more or less just encourage the student to, you know, if they hit a roadblock, if they hit a road bump, um, you know, just reach out earlier than later, you know, and say, hey, I'm having trouble, you know, building this thing that should, you know, I feel like it should be easy, but I'm having a, a problem and you know the mentors probably do this particular thing all the time uh, so it should be pretty easy to say oh yeah we hit that problem you know maybe there's an issue in our documentation for our project or whatnot um, so just encouraging the student to know that they can reach out 
obviously if uh, you know if I'm not available right now you know that's just the the culture around our IRC you know nobody is particularly expected to respond to you immediately on IRC so reach out you know as soon as you have a problem uh, or as soon as you start to have a problem um, and you know not necessarily bug somebody all the time but like obviously if it's taking you a significant amount of time and you feel like it should be an easy task reach out earlier than later. Uh, don't necessarily wait for a weekly meeting. And I do recommend at least a weekly meeting and maybe um, you know, by, uh, you know, more than once a week if once you get into a, a period of time where like, you're getting close to a deadline maybe. Um, so communication obviously and le expectation setting for you know, it's not a big deal for you to reach out to me, I'm available. So. And also something else that, uh, for example, we were mentioning a lot, um, our mentee is that, yeah, sorry. sorry. So something else that we were mentioning, uh, mentioning our mentee a lot is that not only to ask the mentor specifically, but also uh, on different IRC channels that we have, because if we might not be available at the time, someone else will be and they can uh, respond to them. So, and this helps them even to engage more with the community also, not only with the mentor. Right. Maybe we can get Sumatra first, how about that? <laughs> yeah, since, since, yeah, go ahead. That's right, you steal all. I know, yeah, I should have said that a minute ago. So, yeah, exactly on those lines, I mean, we, we, we as mentors shouldn't be blockers to the students. I mean, there's an open channel for them to ask questions. And yes, that's that's one of the greatest way even they develop a community bonding skill. And that's basically the phase one of the evaluation in itself, right? You, you get onboarded with the community. And uh, what I believe is uh, kind of GSOC, so Fedora Project or Gadman Bex kind of does it very good. So we get a list of all the email threads you probably need mailing list you need to subscribe to the, uh, the IRC channels and the fast accounts and all the prerequisites so it's 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 indeed a great experience to get started in at first so yes uh, that's that's one thing a student should always remember you know when they get started it, it's it's all about get starting the very basic things right so you you don't have problem while going forward I mean if, if you're committing code to Pagyar it's essential that you put your SSH key out there and you know you do it the right way so you, when you are actually hitting some problem and it, it's not actually a problem if you have followed the steps right so yeah I think you know you, we, 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 we have done that bit pretty pretty good so yeah and I just want to add one more thing here uh, like you it's helpful for you to set like um, goals like weekly goals or weekly expectations with your mentor a uh, mentee so what we did was we had a list of tasks which we wanted to be completed in those weeks so obviously some of them might turn out to have blockers dependent on others so uh, it like they can be uh, done in the next weeks, but it's useful to define them early on so that the men mentee knows what they are expected to do this week. And there is a, like a project proposal timeline in the application uh, for GSOC and I think also for Outreachy. But this timeline always, at least for us, it got reevaluated and redefined because as we moved forward, we saw different blockers and different tasks got like a higher priority. So uh, be like, uh, I mean, when you define the timeline, be open to redefining it and always set like some weekly expectations from the mentee and be clear about it so that they also know what they should prioritize and it's not confusing for them. So I think the two big things that I found, one, like for the project, I had a bunch of ideas set in my head as to how it would look. Um, the way it actually is, is nothing like that at all. So be flexible um, because, you know, obviously you as a mentor have an idea how you think sh things should be, but the student or other people may have other ideas that are quite often better. Um, so be flexible. Um, and again, with the communication thing, um, like I expect a student to reach out and engage in other parts of the community because ultimately part of growing as a student is being able to do that. But some areas of the community are daunting. Um, and so like, for example, we didn't expect um, 
patches needing to go into Grub, and the Grub maintainer in Fedora is insanely busy. Um, so he will generally ignore conversations from people he doesn't know. Um, and so sometimes it's you as a mentor that needs to start that communication. Like I think Dusty emailed Leonard about system D um, and I wouldn't have expected or it would have been very daunting for say Christian to do that. And so sometimes like there are things that the student should be doing but sometimes the mentor needs to do that and to you know you need to be the one to be you know proactive there so that the student can be successful and you know some things are daunting like you know anything into a lot of say um, certain parts of the kernel community can be very daunting to get engaged in first and and so sometimes you need to be the leader and set up the introductions first so that you know you could so the student can ha ask those questions and what have you but you need to kind of see it so like while there is a certain level of expectation the student should be able to do all of that sometimes it makes it easier and less confrontational for the student for the mentor to start that process and i think that's something to be very mindful of thanks and um so I want to add even something else that uh, encourage your students to write uh, reports. So it's not only for the Google Summer of Code, but uh, especially even for the community, so they know uh, what the student is doing, uh, how the work is going on, and also especially if they found a problem and they found uh, the solution how to solve it, it's great to write a blog even especially for that, so someone else will benefit, and if they have the same problems, they know how to fix it. And uh, you can, uh, uh, of course that you can help them uh, to uh, connect their blog with uh, Fedora Planet so everyone can check that or uh, they can post their uh, articles on Fedora community blog. But I think that part is also very important so everyone and the community can know also what uh, the student is doing and not only the mentors. Uh, so uh, thank you for all the tips that you gave and the work that you have done. Thank you. Uh, so now it's the time for the mentees to show their work, what they have been working during the summer. The first one is Anna, and she will talk about Fedora happiness packets. Um, hi, so um, I hope I don't have to introduce myself. My name is Anna, and I was working for, with the, the Fedora Happiness Packets for this uh, summer for the past three months. And as you know, my mentors are the lovely B and Yona over there. And so um, I guess they already explained the project, so I really don't have to talk about why I worked on it. So Fedora Happiness pro uh, Project was basically uh, done for Fedora Appreciation Week to encourage people to like contribute, like show their appreciation for their fellow contributors, basically. Yeah. And what is it if um, tech-wise, like I had to like work with Django, the Django ecosystem, and for me, like that, I don't know, like. Um, uh, the Django ecosystem, like Redis, Celery, Nginx, G Unicorn, like it was a full, like a whole stack experience, what I had basically. So, yeah. And basically, what my job was to integrate the open source uh, happiness packets with the existing um, um, Fedora uh, ecosystem. Like, it had to work with fed message and you know the users had to be able to log in and authenticate with their fast ID accounts basically so that's pretty much what the main gist of my project is just integrating it with the federal ecosystem so um, what I worked on basically uh, I mentioned that already but and um, you know my primary deliverables were like get the fast authentication working um, make a new badge so like whenever a uh, new user contributes like sends a happiness packet they get a new badge for that so you guys can like look forward to a new badge collect now and 
yeah, that's basically what I did and what I learned. So uh, yeah, the fin final results, I'm happy to say I finally finished the primary deliverables and the site is up and running so you can go check it out actually, like right now. And um, just like some, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's about it. And so this is just like a screenshot. I'm not a designer, so it doesn't look really good right now. But this could possibly be an outreachy project, maybe. Who knows? I might start mentoring. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So this is like basically what we are expecting. It's going to look a lot, whole lot better, like for Fedora Appreciation Week. But basically, you have you can send these small little notes of appreciation to your fellow contributors make them feel special you know so yeah and yeah so once you log in you should be able to just put in the person's name their email and send a message and if you're an introvert like me you don't like coming up to people and doing this face to face you can just like hide your name if you want yeah and uh, I guess I should just talk a little bit of what I learned for me why this project was perfect for me. I'm new to Fedora, like I just started three months ago. And um, well, for me, like I, I, I'm, I'm a Python developer, but I never had to like really learn Django. But you know, like working with this project, I got to like go through the whole Django ecosystem. Like as I mentioned, Redis, Celery, Nginx, and Unicorn. And plus the other great thing about this project was um, I had to collaborate with other teams besides the com ops team, so it's not just like I had to talk with the infra team, and I had to like talk with the design team as well. So uh, that's something new. And plus, and the other thing is like I touched on a lot of other Fedora projects like Epsilon, Fed messages. So for me, this was like perfect. Yeah. So that's what I did this summer. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think so we have time for that. We will do that uh, when all the students will finish the presentation. So, uh, and one more thing, we will do usability testing for happiness packets project during the ComOps uh, hack session today in the afternoon. So if you want to be a part of the usability testing sessions, please feel free to join us during ComOps uh, workshop. And it will be at most like 15 to 20 minutes. Thanks. And So hello. What? It's okay. So, uh, my name is Rado. I will get it quick because we are kind of running out of time. So, uh, I was doing uh, this as a Google Summer of Code project. was like uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift support for Konu. I will explain what is Konu uh, at first. So, um, Konu is basically like a Python API for your containers. Uh, we have a uh, upstream repo on GitHub. Uh, you can check it out. There is a lot of examples uh, in README if you want to know more about it. And uh, our Google Summer of Code uh, goal was to implement this support for Kubernetes and OpenShift. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a li library which makes it easy to write tests for your containers. And it's handy when you're playing with containers inside of your code. Um, so uh, the question was why do we need this support? And uh, Konu had just support for standalone containers, but nowadays all applications running in Kubernetes or in OpenShift. And um, another thing was that uh, tests for uh, images that needs to run in OpenShift were are mostly written in Bash, which is hard to maintain. So this was the main advantage. And 
Um, so as the last thing, I will show like a really simple example of how it works. So in this code, uh, important line is line eight, where you can like easily create pod uh, that you easily like uh, run your image in the pod in Kubernetes. Uh, and then you can like uh, wait until it's running and uh, verify that it's it's ready. And uh, as an output we gi uh, of this code, we give uh, to user like uh, a log that is like easy to read, and that's it actually. Uh, if you want to see more examples. Uh, like more advanced examples also for OpenShift. You can just check the upstream repo and uh, there is more examples there. So that's basically. So next one we have the Fedora Community app. Uh, Apishek is the first one. Sorry for saying your name wrong. Uh, you will be together, okay? And Amitosh. Should I bring my laptop? Then? That record. It's open in a laptop. You just log in. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhishek, and uh, good afternoon. I'm Amdosh. So this summer we worked on the Fedora community app. Uh, initially we had a really basic version, so we made some UI changes and there were some improvements on the back end. I worked on the front end, he worked on the back end, so we'll just walk you through the changes we did. So this was the, uh, on the, on the right you can see there is the old home screen, on the left there's a new home screen. Uh, we changed the navigation and the stuff. Uh, and in the backend part, initially everything was loaded directly from the internet. Now we have an offline caching system. And we also revamped the storage system that was present earlier so that this loads around five times faster now. Okay, next. Then we have the Fedora magazine so the uh, users can read the latest articles. We changed the interface for this as well. There's uh, a bookmarking option so you can read the articles offline. Uh, Amitosh will tell. Yeah, uh, implementing this offline part was a challenge in itself. Like how long do you want to keep it and how do you synchronize with the updates that are happening on the website uh, in the Fedora magazine. So it was an interesting part that we worked for around two weeks. And next. Then we have the Ask Fedora so the users can uh, browse through the doubts. Okay. Uh, and so we segregated into three parts. You, you can see the latest questions or what are the most voted doubts. Uh, then we have the Fedora calendar so you can see what were the past events and what are the upcoming events. You can add the events to the calendar. Amitosh improved the subscription manager so he'll talk about it. Yeah. Now you can see that there, there is a button called Add to Calendar. Now when you click this button, all the events of the same calendar or if you're clicking on the particular event then all the future occurrences of the event will be automatically synced to your phone now if the phone is connected to google calendar then you will get the same notification in all the devices that are synced to the same calendar uh, then we added a few more features like the packet search was there and we added a small section about the fedora app amitosh will tell something about the packet search so the package search lets you search the packages that are available on the Fedora repos. So it will walk through the package, the kind of package it is, then the sub packages that are available and how to install it using DNF. And a very short description of the package. So this was something I worked on. It was the Fedora podcast. We integrated it into the app so the users can listen it anytime, anywhere. And uh, this was something I worked on. These were the error states in the app. So we need to show some cool illustrations when there is no data or there is some error. Then these are some backend features. Amitosh will talk 
about it yeah i talked mostly about that all the like while we are demoing the screens now we also didn't have a lot of unit tests and integration tests so i worked in implementing them now before a release we can actually be sure that every all of these screens are actually working and also when we started we were like around two or three releases behind and we migrated the old frameworks into the latest version of the code yeah so i guess that's all from us start uh, you can start contributing to the app we really need someone to help us yeah. and thank you we definitely need someone in ios Okay, so next we have uh, Chris that will talk about Fedora IoT Atomic Host Upgrade Team. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Christian, and I worked on the Atomic Host Upgrade Daemon, which was ideated by Peter. Um, I'll just quickly open the where's the the Can website? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, it quickly came to uh, well, quickly became clear that uh, we didn't want to write another big fat daemon to to do this kind of thing to enable automatic upgrades and fallbacks. Uh, so we chose System D to do all the heavy lifting, and I sort of had to look at the ecosystem and see what parts of this functionality were missing still and what could be used from what projects. Um, so. Yeah, this culminated in one project, which is called Green Boot. Uh, it's sort of for boot success determination. Uh, you can define your own uh, your own checks, uh, require checks, which will uh, make make the the uh, the boot status fail, make it red when they fail uh, the required ones and the wanted ones, which are optional tests, which you can just. Uh, sort of put in, in the check section as well. And then you have a green routine and a red routine, which will uh, sort of run red scripts or green scripts, depending on your boot status. Um, yeah, this is the project that sort of uh, came from this. Uh, there were changes required in Grub to enable a, yeah, it's a, we call it boot counting. It's a boot attempt countdown. Uh, so you can define a, number x of boot attempts you will try one new entry and if that fails repeatedly for x times it'll automatically fall back to the older version to the second boot entry in grub um, so yeah i submitted a patch to grub which was actually has actually already been merged into the fedora 29 branch um, of grub so yeah if you want to use this go to github Alorbus Chris uh, Green Boot, Green Boot, um, and uh, check it out. If you uh, have any tests in mind, this is obviously uh, very useful for for, uh, for the IoT stuff, testing sensors and running just tests. If you have any any s specific tests in mind, um, I'm very happy to to accept tests, uh, sort of general, generally useful tests uh, into this. There's already a sub pack. Uh, there's already a few sub packages in this one. Um, it's not yet in the Fedora repos. It's on Copper, so you can uh, DNF enable Lorbus slash uh, Greenboot to install it. Mm, it'll be in, in Fedora very soon, I hope. And yeah, give me. F I'm, I'm yeah very open to feedback. Uh, put it under some scrutiny. Um, yeah. And the last one is Marie, that she did uh, the outreach internship uh, in 2013 uh, for Fedora Badges. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm just going to take the few moments that I've been given to um, talk about uh, myself as a success story. I did outreach in 2013, as they said, and my mentor was Mismo and she was amazing. Uh, I can't speak highly enough about uh, how she worked with me. Um, so I think beyond just 
we had kind of established like this is how we're going to work. We met once a week. It, it, that part was kind of just like easy because I'm very self-motivated and there was a lot to do. Um, but I think beyond the actual internship, I think it's really important for mentors to encourage their students to, or mentees to come to events like Flock or you know any other event that might be applicable. So I had done the internship and I had really only interacted with her and a few other people on tickets. I had never used Fedora before. Um, I don't write code even still, but I found a place here in this community and that was because of Ms. Mo. So she, um, she encouraged me to go to Flock in 2014 and speak about what I had done, um, speak about my internship. And so I came to that, that conference and it was an amazing experience. I, I felt a little alone because I'm not a developer. <laughs> so that, that experience is a little tough. It would have been great if she were there. I think that would have made it even better. But um, I, I started talking to the people in the community and everyone was like, what, you did this? You know, we've been seeing this, this is awesome. And, you know, I had those moments to start making friendships, which I think we all know that that's one of the biggest parts about Fedora. So, you know, encouraging and kind of keeping a relationship with your mentee after the internship is over, I think is really important. Checking in, checking in with them if you can, um, encouraging them to do other events or get involved in other in other aspects. So after I did Fedora badges, then Mo, you know, encouraged me to get involved in the design team. And hey, do you want to do this ticket? Do you want to do this thing? And hey, do you want to come to the fad? And so it, you know she continued to look after me a little bit and encourage me until I. I really felt comfortable in the community, and I think it for outreach yeah, I'm a, a success story. You know, I'm still here five years later, um, you know, running fedora badges on the design end, and um, so I really attribute all of that to Ms. Mo and, and her awesome mentoring. So that's, that's really all I want to say. So I know that we are running out of time, or we are already very late, but I want to ask all the students to come and ask them only one question. Uh, because I, I think that all of us are interested to know the challenges that they had during their internship, um, how, I don't know, how you solved it or what you learned uh, for, from this experience. Who wants to start? Um, yeah, for me, the the most challenging thing was actually communication. Dusty mentioned it already, um, because I had to sort of uh, look into different projects outside of Fedora, even uh, System D and Grub. Uh, I was sort of it was required that their maintainers gave me input, and that was at times a bit frustrating. But um, communication is key, and that's definitely what I learned uh, to communicate more than less. Um, and uh, then things just get worked out, even if you have to wait a few days, maybe for a reply. Eventually, uh, someone will, will give you some feedback, and then you can sort of uh, go ahead with your work. And yeah, not to get frustrated by this kind of thing. Uh, that's definitely what I learned. And also, in general, how community works, uh, what, what, that there are that many communication channels, mailing lists, IRC, um, even yeah, uh, what's it called? Uh, discourse. So there's just so many channels you can you can get info from. Uh, from uh, it's just uh, it's, you know it's just important to to learn about all of them and see who's on what channel and stuff like that. So adding to what Christian said, I basically learned the power of collaboration. So we two both were working together. He was working on the back end. I was working on the front end. So sometimes I had to wait for him. So uh, he had uh, he, I so he can do some stuff. There were some blockers. So I really learned how to work in a team. This was something uh, I wanted to share. What else? Uh, so in my part, I had a completely different set of challenges than they did. So one of the interesting thing that I was sitting and solving was localization. So there was just so many data and time formats and so many uh, expectations of different kinds of people around the world. Now, 
I was living in a time zone where we do not observe DST, but I wanted to test how the app actually ran in DST. So that test was continuing till the day I arrived at Flock. So since I shifted from a non-DST to DST, and I'm happy that my, work, my app and the code works perfectly. And that was one interesting challenge that I had. And the second challenge is, uh, this is a very well-known phrase, two different, two difficult stuffs in computer science, cache validation and naming things. So cache invalidation was some challenge that was like, it was working sometimes, it wasn't. Then when we did some code pushes and did some merges, then the cache validation logic totally went haywire. So then again, I had to sit and fix it. So that was one, one challenge that I had to solve. Yeah. Yeah. Anna? So I will say just one quick thing, and it's about the application process. And I strongly advise all the students to actually start contributing to project uh, before application period, even like one month, two months before, <laughs> because because that is what I think mentors wants to see that you really contributed to the project before. Um, besides the communication thing, like he said, uh, I actually, uh, one of the plugins, Django plugins had a bug on it, so I couldn't continue, and that was a blocker. So what happened is I opened up an issue, I let sit there for like a one month, and then was like, you know what, I have to fix this, I need to like get this done for GSOC immediately. Um, but besides that, I had to like get very creative with the people, like who I ask questions again, like where to look for help, because... Um, I live in a different time zone. We are not like this whole GSOC. They were in Germany, I was in India, and then like, not India, sorry, Dallas. I don't live there anymore, yeah, Dallas. So we had totally different time zones. So I had like make a list of these questions, which I posted up in the middle of the night. And when I wake up next morning, <laughs> they're all answered. <laughs> so yeah, like it was for me, it's like a bit of a balancing work, time management. And just being judicious with the time and planning beforehand, you know, because I had to keep in mind that they're in a different time zone. Yeah, that's about it. And what's next for you, like in Fedora or in general, now that you are finishing the internship? I am already a Fedora contributor since last two years, so I'll definitely be continuing in the area. So I have, now this project got me in introduced with some other interesting projects that we have, mostly in the infra world. So I have been contributing there too. So I'll be probably working on the app itself. And if anyone in the Fedora community needs help with UI or something, just hit me up. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah. I'm definitely like going to continue contributing because my work is not done. Federal Appreciation Week is still, it's going to happen like in a few months from now. But I've been so inspired to like start mentoring for GSOC and Outreach for this year. Um, yeah, for me, it's also I'm going to keep maintaining Green Boot and uh, hopefully add lots of things to it, um, make it really useful. Um, I'll stay a member of the Atomic or nowadays CoreOS, uh, Fedorat CoreOS uh, community, um, as I've been for a while. And um, yeah, I'll, I hope I'll, I can contribute some things for the RPM OS3 Compose container that's going to that's gonna be the new build system for, for CoreOS and all the uh, OS3 based uh, editions of Fedora, which I'm really interested in. I just love that tech. Yeah. So I will continue to maintain the Konu, and also I will be somewhere around the containers in Fedora in next years, months, maybe. <laughs> so thank you for um, all the work that all of you have done. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, if you have any questions, we will be around, because we are very late now. And we need to do a group photo, so if someone volunteers to take the picture, <laughs> would be great. So the mentors, men students are here, and Brian, Laura. Brian, we need you. <laughs> no, it's fine, Angelo can do it. Yeah. Boy, for all of you in GSOC, don't forget to get your final submissions. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
sound like this. Can everyone see me? <laughs> it was well time for a flock, and I'm sorry about no. that. I called Google. I'm like, you should so move it for us. And they were like, no. <laughs> I'm going to stand behind you so that's how fat I am. You, you really want to be pictured looking at me lovingly? Can I say that the same? Sure. Jeez, uh, it's, it's so nice. Alright, on the count of three. One, two, nineteen. <laughs> One more for the Lakers. What happened to Chase? <laughs> Thank you, Justine. Christine.